Good morning, everyone. It's around 6.50 a.m. Started about 5 a.m. at the trailhead. About a three mile hike. Uh, not a huge elevation gain, about 11,500 feet. And this is the first time I've been to here. It is the Blue Lakes and the Indian Peaks Wilderness. Not too far from Denver, so pretty accessible from home. And I'm currently looking around for compositions. We've got about 15 or 20 minutes until sunrise, and I'm hoping there's some nice golden light on these peaks and the lake behind me. So we're gonna keep looking around and hopefully we find something. So uh, let's get going. As you can tell, we found a composition. And it didn't take me very long, because I just kind of look for what I know and what I like to shoot, especially when I'm in an area that I've never been to before. And here it was pretty easy. Mountain, water, rocks. So all I did was walk around the lake, I looked for compositions, or excuse me, I looked for rocks that were in the water that I could get to, so that I could have the rocks as the foreground, mountain as the background. Pretty simple. Pretty standard for me, but very easy to find, hopefully, thankfully. Uh, and it means I don't have to look for thing, anything too uh, abstract or intricate my first visit. Technically wise, I'm shooting at f11, which is a little bit different than my normal f8. The reason is I wanted to slow the water down because it's pretty fast moving, as you can see in the camera. And I wanted to try to smooth it out a little bit. So I just wanted to slow down my shutter speed just enough, so f11 was fine. It's also a very sharp aperture, sometimes sharper than f8, depending on your lens. The other thing you'll notice is I'm shooting with a polarizer. Now, that is to cut the light out of this foreground water that's in my shot, but I also have the option not to cut it out. So I took both exposures. Sometimes it just looks better when you can see through the water. Sometimes the reflections look better if the light hits it right. The only other thing I did technically was I shot a focus stack, so I focused on foreground rock, the main rock, and the background. And then I also bracketed the shot, but I don't, I did not shoot with a plus two EV. I just bracketed for the zero EV and the minus two EV so that I could capture that red light on the mountain. Pretty simple composition. I think it'll turn out and I think we got a shot. So that's a pretty successful trip for the first time up here. Uh, we're gonna continue walking around. I'll probably take some more shots as I walk down the mountain, hopefully. So I'll see you again soon. Here's the shot. Let me know what you guys think.
I think we found another possible composition. The lighting isn't great, but I think I'm going to try to shoot it anyways just to get an idea of what the composition will look like. I'm also curious if you'll be able to hear me since I'm shooting directly with the waterfall behind me. The composition is uh, pretty simple. There's a little pool right here, a uh, small waterfall as you can see in the frame, and then a big mountain in the background. So I'm going to set up my camera, try to see if we can uh, see the composition. I haven't done that yet. I wanted to try to talk about it first because I was going to explain that even though I don't think the lighting is right for this moment, I want to see what this photo will look like in the future. Uh, I chose to shoot sunrise up at the lake, as you saw, that meant I did not get to shoot this shot during the sunrise light. So I'm going to try this composition and there's some birds just right behind where the camera is sitting right now and I'm trying not to disturb them as they look like they're trying to stay warm. And uh, I think this shot could work, maybe not today, but another day. So let's give it a try. So we've got our composition set up. Pretty simple. On the right side, bottom part of the frame, we've got that waterfall. Left side a little bit, top of the frame, mountains. The challenging part was there's a rock in the bottom right side of the frame that I don't want in the composition. So I tried my absolute best to balance the waterfall with the mountains in the background uh, to the best of my ability. And again, I think for now, this is a proof of concept shot. I don't think this is a shot that uh, I will you know, put on my portfolio as the lighting is not what I want it to be. But I want to take this shot so that I have it for later to know how it's going to look, how to set it up in the future. And I will admit it is absolutely beautiful here, but in terms of photography lighting and my personal preferences, not quite what I want to do. But sometimes I like to take shots just so that I have them for the future. So I can know, okay, when I come back for sunrise, maybe when there's more snow on the ground, this is going to be the shot. Uh, the technical side of this shot is I've got my polarizer on so I can cut out some of the light in the sky and some of the light that's in the water. And other than that, I'm going to bracket typically just because the foreground is going to be darker than the background and I want that extra dynamic range just in case. So I'm going to take a few shots, put them on the screen, hope you guys enjoy. Just remember, sometimes we take shots just so we know what they might look like in the future. You can see our two little birdie friends are here and here. And we have not disturbed them yet and we just took the shot. So, hopefully we can pack up and uh, not interrupt their little warm spot that they have there.
All right, sorry to interrupt your regularly scheduled programming, but the next scene just isn't gonna make the cut. Uh, there were some audio issues, two major ones. One, it's a little bit windy, but the other one is uh, my dog is whining in the background because I'm standing on a rock that's in a lake and she just wants to jump into the lake the entire time and she's not allowed, so she's just whining in the background of my, my, uh, my take there. So instead, you get me. And uh, it's still the same me, just a little bit better lighting. <laughs> and as you can tell, the lighting that at that time had turned from that nice early morning light to that late harsh light that's just not good for photography. So this was the last scene of the video. And I basically just kind of wrap things up, which is what I'm gonna do now. Uh, you'll also notice that the headlamp throughout the whole video uh, <laughs> never came off. I, I, I genuinely think I forgot it was there and I guess it's a testament to the headlamp because I completely forgot it was on my head, which is a great transition to my sponsor today. Uh, Black, I'm just kidding. I wish I was sponsored. So as I said in the video, scouting locations is really important, but there's a more productive way to do it than just go and look for compositions. Uh, so I had never been here. I showed up in complete darkness, but I had an idea in mind just because I knew where I was going via just Googling the images, but I only knew that one shot. I didn't know where I was gonna take it. I didn't even know there was gonna be rocks in the foreground. I just knew there was a mountain and a lake and then I could do the rest once I got there. I didn't try to reinvent myself. I didn't try to find some crazy composition. I just shot what I knew would work because it was the first time visiting that spot. And I don't think the shot turned out to be anything spectacular. Um, it's passable, it's not world-class, but with some better conditions, that could be a really good shot with some mist coming off of the, the lake that's in front of me, with some clouds going by that mountain that catch that early golden light, that red light that we got. There's a lot of things that could change. And that's the whole point of this video is that to, to take yourself from amateur or just hobbyist landscape photographer, you have to be persistent. You have to go to locations over and over and over again, five, 10, 50 times to just continually take shots of those spots that work, but you need to have the right conditions. And that is, in my opinion, what sets apart the people that we all follow and look up to, myself included, and those of us that just can't go back to those locations over and over. This particular spot is only like an hour and 15 minutes away from where I live. So it's a location that I could potentially go to often. So that's why it was important to go figure out what it looks like and really just kind of look around for more spots and more compositions, which is what I did. So with that in mind, I always like to remind myself first and then you guys to not get stuck behind your lens. Uh, it's harder for me just because not only am I trying to shoot photos, I'm also trying to film myself, but I always try to remind myself, enjoy where I am, enjoy that I'm out of the house, enjoy that I'm getting some exercise, that I'm breathing fresh air because the places that we are, the places that we go, the places that we photograph, at this point, they, they might not exist forever. There's been a lot of wildfires going on in Colorado, and that spot that I wa was in uh, came dangerously close to being hit by one of those wildfires. And it, it's actually a video I have that I'm gonna release at some point about the wildfires and how they affect photography or natural disasters in general uh, around the world. And that it's really important that we as photographers or we as people, when we go, really embrace those moments because maybe it's not there anymore. Maybe you can't get to it anymore. Maybe it's completely changed. So all of those places that you go that you're trying to take a photo, regardless of the conditions, regardless if you end up snapping a photo you like, try to enjoy it as much as you possibly can. And with that said, I thank you guys for watching. Uh, <laughs> if you've made it this far, well, you probably accidentally left the stream on. And if you didn't and you're not subscribed, I'd love if you subscribed, like this video. Uh, it really helps me out still just starting and uh, we're trying to navigate how to do all this. So I thank you for watching and I'll see you guys again soon.